momentum for a rigid body so I'm just drawing a, a generic body is a center of mass um, it's since it's a rigid body it's going to have an angular speed or not but it could have an angular speed a velocity this is the linear velocity uh, when we write the linear momentum we'll call that l l is mass times velocity or the same thing which we had for particle similarly we have what is called an angular momentum which will denote using h uh, h specifically we'll write h about g uh, that's simply i g omega okay so even though h is a vector i wrote it as a scalar because for planar problems like this the angular momentum is always along the k direction now it points either positive k or negative k direction right uh, it's given by the direction of omega omega is this way so the thumb would be giving the direction of hg okay now uh, we'll we'll talk about a, a few special cases if there's pure translation okay the rigid body is only translating but not rotating then we can write l equals mvg and hg is simply zero because angular speed is zero the second case is rotation about fixed axis an example would be a pendulum the linear momentum is still mvg but the angular momentum is going to be hg equals i g omega okay you could also write the angular momentum about a different point h o say i o omega where uh, o could be any judiciously judiciously chosen point just that far one is not working yeah i think you just need to manually Yeah, okay. okay, typically we would like to put a uh, place O to be the point at about which the pendulum is or the rigid body is rotating right the third case is the general case where we have general planar motion l is mvg and uh, hg is i g omega okay Restart. No, no, I didn't. Is it turned? Oh, it's muted. Oh, okay. There, so you should be good to go now. Is that muted? Was it muted there or over here? Um. Well, there. I mean, this is. Can I fix this next time, or I need to call you guys? You should call next time. Um, is this projector mute button, generally speaking, when one of them isn't on, it'll say left projector on, right projector on. But pressing that would fix the problem? Um, this time it wouldn't because the cable that connects it that sends a control signal was loose, so it wasn't plugged in. Oh. So, thank you for calling. Anyway, thanks for coming quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, write that formula down or you could also use the IC to do this. IC, H, IC. 
is I about I C omega. The reason why you do this is because you always want to find a point which is not moving or moves with uh, zero velocity. So for fixed rotation or fixed axis, the point which is the hinge point is at rest, right? So you could use I O equals I omega, but you cannot use the same thing for over here in the general planar case. Okay, the last thing uh, before we start solving problem is <coughs> principle of impulse momentum. Okay, there are two of those. One of them is uh, mvg1 plus fdt from 1 to 2 equals mvg2. Uh, and the other one relates the angular momentum h about some point O, it could be g, plus we call this t1, t2. M O D T T1 T2 is equal to H or the angular momentum after the force is applied. So this is 1 so the thing is you need H right to solve this and the H's come are also defined over there so you have to use this in conjunction with uh, what I already wrote down Okay, so let's use these things to solve some uh, problems today. Okay, the double pulley consists of two wheels which are attached to one another and turn at the same rate. The pulley has a mass of 15 kilograms and a radius of gyration of 110 millimeters. If the block A has a mass of 40 kilograms, 40 kg, uh, determine the speed of the block in 3 seconds. So determine the speed of the block in 3 seconds after a constant force of 2 kilonewtons is applied to the rope wrapped around the inner hub of the pulley. The block is originally at rest. Okay, so because of the force, 2 kilonewtons applied by that motor, the 40 kg mass moves up. You got to find the speed after 3 seconds. I believe I forgot to post these things. Um, I didn't do that, you didn't know. I'm going to post this very quickly. Uh, and then you can download that. Okay, so if you navigate to the lectures folder on Blackboard, uh, it should be the first entry. I'm just putting it up, pulling it to the first, to be the top entry. Okay. 
okay uh, pre lecture notes are on blackboard lecture notes first entry so the key thing which you want to see in this problem is that you are told to find the speed of the block in 3 seconds so speed is a function of time and when you see those that relation uh, you are better off using principle of either linear impulse or angular impulse or sometimes both okay, so that highlighted the key things here this is the key thing okay so let's start off with uh, free body diagram because that will tell us what forces uh, come in the principle which we'll apply principle of linear or angular impulse okay so at o there would be a horizontal reaction force due to the pin joint and there will be a vertical force there is a constant force F applied by the motor and then there is going to be uh, MAG and then of course I need to put the mass of uh, pulley so let me call it MPG So this is the point O. <coughs> okay, so there are just two principles here. Pri principle of linear impulse and momentum and principle of angular impulse and momentum. Uh, let's see if we can apply principle of linear impulse and momentum. If you apply the principle of linear impulse and momentum, right, uh, it's like F equals MV or L equals MV. Uh, the external forces on the system are going to be F x0, v0, and mpg. But we are not interested in finding x0, v0. I don't even think we are given mp. Are we given the mass of pulley? Oh, yeah, we, we are given. But we are not interested in h or vo. So why apply linear impulse and momentum? Because you are not interested in those forces. So instead, if you apply the principle of angular impulse and momentum about O, then x0, v0 will not feature in those equations because uh, those forces act at O. So, the best thing to do in this case is to apply the principle of angular impulse and momentum. It states that the angular impulse initially, so at instance 1, plus the m0 dt from t1 to t2 equals the new angular momentum okay so the system starts from rest so the initial angular momentum is going to be zero so let's find the angular momentum after three seconds it's going to be uh, So this is rotation about fixed axis, so I'm going to use that formula, I0 times omega, this is for the pulley, but there would be a momentum due to the mass of 40 kilograms in addition to that due to the pulley, so I need to add to this mass times velocity of mass of a velocity of a times the radius in this case the radius is going to be the the larger of the two because this pulley acts at the the larger radius i'm going to write that point two okay so this thing is spinning clockwise so this is really minus omega right because omega is clockwise.
Okay, so what's IO? IO is mass of pulley times the radius of vibration times minus omega plus mass of A, the velocity of A. What's the velocity of A in terms of omega? It's simply omega times the radius. So it's going to be omega times the larger of the two radius is this one. So it's going to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. But since the angular speed is clockwise, I need to put negative here. So mass of pulley is 15, k0 is 0 0.11 plus mass of A is 40 uh, times 0.2 times 0.2. I'm going to pull the minus omega out. So I get 1 point negative 1.7815 times omega. Okay, so I've identified H0, H0. 0, 1, H, 0, 2. I need to find M0 dt. This is where the free body diagram will help. You're going to find the external torque at the point O and that comes from the free body diagram. So M0, let's find the moment about 0 or O, sorry. Okay, so there are uh, how many forces? One, two, three, four, five. There are five forces. Uh, fortunately, three of those forces, H0, V0, MPG, all act at O. So the contribution due to those three forces is going to be zero. The only forces which contribute are F and MAG. So F times the smaller radius, which is 0.75, so 0 0.075 in meters, uh, is going to be the torque due to F. But since the torque is clockwise, right, it's going to turn the pulley clockwise, it's going to be negative. The other torque is MAG times the larger radius, which is 200 mm. So 0 0.2 with a positive sign because MAG induces a clock counterclockwise torque. So F is minus 2 kilonewtons times 0 0.075 plus uh, MA is 40, G is 9.81 times 0 0.2. That comes out to be 71.52. Okay, so you're all set now. Uh, so take this equation and simplify. 0 plus integral 71 points. It should be negative. It's negative. Integral 71.52. from 0 to 3 seconds dt equals uh, h02 which is minus 1.7815 omega but since this is a constant the force the, so the axial moment this is minus 71.52 times 3 like 3 and 0 5 omega so that's 214.56 equals minus 1.7815 omega. That gives omega equals 120.44. And I believe we are asked to find velocity, speed of the block. So we need to find the speed of the block which is simply r times omega, r is 0 0.2.
times uh, omega comes out to be 24.027 meters per second. Okay, so the reason we used principle of angular momentum and impulse is because uh, A, we were trying to find velocity as a function of time and specifically why we used angular momentum is because we didn't want to, as opposed to linear impulse and momentum is because we do not want to solve for H0, V0. We just want to do with what is known, which is F, capital F and MAG. Uh, this problem can be solved using F equals MA. Okay, you do not need to use this principle. The way you solve with F equals MA is you take the uh, angular, what's that, F equals uh, R, M equals uh, I alpha, right? This is rotation about fixed axis. So you take uh, take the equation of motion, the rotation part, which is the external moment at, let me write this down. So another way, is use the moment about O is I about O times alpha. And uh, so the moment is found exactly like I've done over here. Find I zero, you solve for alpha, solve for alpha, that's the first step. And once you solve for alpha, then you will integrate to solve for omega. Okay, and once you get omega, you can get V. Okay, so this is a perfectly feasible way to do it. Uh, you don't need to do this, but as I said, you have to integrate. In this case, you have to integrate, but that's M zero dt. Here you have to integrate alpha, they have to integrate M. So it's the same work, but uh, it will also work. You give you the same answer. How do we know to use this? Okay, so what's that? That's that's the okay. What I'm writing here is h02. H02 is the angular momentum due to uh, due to this pulley as well as the mass about O. So this part is due to the pulley. This part has to be due to the mass A. So what's the momentum due to a particle? It's R cross MV. Is R cross MV, okay? Uh, what's R? R is the distance from here to here. That's R and then MV. So R, this point two is because uh, the, the momentum is at O due to this particle is R, which is that distance from O to the point at which the string hangs loose from the pulley uh, crossed with MV. That's why. Yeah. So I did not quite cover this in my formula today, but if you go back to chapter 15, we did R cross MV for a particle, and that's where it comes from. This is from chapter 15. So this is a mixture of both rigid bodies and particles. Okay, any other questions? The 30 kg gear A has a radius of, sorry, has a radius of gyration about its center of mass of 125 mm. If the 20 kg gear rack B, so 20 kg, and this is 30 kgs. Uh, rack B is subject to a force of 200 newtons. Determine the time required for the gear to obtain angular speed of 20 radians per second starting from this. The contact surface between the gear rack and the horizontal surface, gear rack and the surface. So there's no friction here, that's what they say. Okay, so the key thing here is determine the time Question is, determine the time required for the gear to obtain an angular velocity of 20 radians per second. So we got to find 
the time when the angular speed gets to 20 radians per second. This system starts from rest. Okay. So again, the key thing to note here is find the time as a function of speed. When you see that kind of uh, uh, relation which you're asked, you're better off using one of the two principles of either linear impulse, uh, angular impulse and momentum or both. So before we do that, let's proceed drawing a free body diagram because that will inform uh, which one to use, linear or angular impulse. So FBD for individual objects. This is the gear and the rack. The 200 newtons and one. Uh, so obviously going to be M A. Sorry, M B G. Okay. There's no friction between. Um, the ground and this, so we don't have to draw any friction over here, that's not needed. Okay, let's draw forces on at O. So there is a vertical force, horizontal force at the pin joint, uh, and there's going to be M A G. Uh, since the two gear at the rack and the gear are interacting, there would be a normal force. So, a normal force, let me call it N2. Actually, let me be consistent with my notes. Let me call this N1. Let me call this N2. Okay. Uh, but this is an action reaction pair. So, when I remove my N1, there should be a corresponding force <laughs> on the rack. So, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be the same place. So, N1 plus MBG, right? because that force and that force should sum up to, when you put them together, this, that force should uh, add up to zero. Okay. Is that it? Is, am I missing something? Okay, so I'm surely missing something. The reason is this. When I pull this force with the rack with the force P, right, this thing is going to speed up, you know, from experience. If this is going to speed up, then there better be uh, an external torque acting on this part, on this uh, gear, making it to spin. But right now, all the forces pass through O, but they will not cause the gear to spin up or go faster. So I'm missing a force. The force which I'm missing is actually a force which which causes the interaction between A and B. So there has to be a force this way on the gear, which will enable it to speed up, right? Otherwise, it's not going to turn if we don't have this force. And again, if I put a force F on the gear, there better be an equal and opposite force on the rack because it's an action-reaction pair, just like N1. So there's going to be a force this way, which is exactly equal but opposite to the direction of it. So that, this completes the free body diagram. Okay, so we got to, we got to find the speed of this. Oh, well, we've got to find the time when the speed is 20 radians per second. Uh, so we've already decided that we're going to use impulse momentum, but we don't know angular or linear. Now, if you want to find solve for the speed, well, the time, even the speed, that's a hint that you want to use angular impulse and momentum and not linear impulse because uh, the linear impulse doesn't quite have omega. Another reason why you want to use angular impulse is if you use linear impulse, then x0, v0 
we'll figure out an equation for linear impulse and we are not interested in those forces so let's write the principle of is it the other direction you are right it's going to be this way principle of angular impulse So H0, and this is for uh, A, H01 plus M0 dt is equal to H02. So from T1 to T2, okay, initial angular momentum is 0. Uh, we need to write M0 dt, or the, all the external forces. So good news is that uh, of the four forces acting on A, only one force contributes towards the external torque, that is capital F. So F times the radius, which is 0.15, dt would be the external force. Now, uh, F times R, or R plus F, will induce a clock counterclockwise movement. So the sign is positive and I already have that in there. Uh, equals the new, the angular momentum of uh, two after three seconds. So that's going to be M zero K zero square times omega. Okay. Now, since I know that uh, P is constant, F should also be a constant. So I can write this as 0t. And so when I integrate this, I get 0.15f times t equals m0k0 square omega. Right? <coughs> okay, so uh, we're given. Let me write this as MA at MA. Okay, that's better. Okay, so let's see what, what is known, what is unknown. We're trying to solve for T. We know omega, we know K0, we know MA. We don't know S. We know P, but we do not know F. So one equation and two unknowns. One equation, two unknowns, f and t, we cannot solve for both unless we generate another equation. So to generate the second equation, we might have to look at the other uh, body, which is b. Okay, so we need to find, somehow relate f, capital F with p in order to solve for f and then we can find t. So that's our goal. Uh, so we have to look at the other system which is the gear, uh, and we can ask the same question, which is, uh, we, we know something about, we know the time, sorry, we, know, we, we sort of know the velocity of the gear, of the rack after three seconds. We know that because we know the angular speed is 20, so we can relate that with the linear speed of the rack. It's simply V equals omega R. So we know that, we do not know the time, so why don't we apply principle of uh, impulse and momentum, one of the two, but the rack is a particle. It is not, it doesn't have a moment of inertia. So we treat it as a particle and for a particle, we do not apply angular impulse and momentum because there's no inertia. We only apply principle of linear impulse and momentum. So let's apply principle of linear impulse and momentum. So which states that uh, L, you know what rotation we use? Did we use L? I think we use MV. We just started off using MV1 plus F external dt equals MV2. This goes from T1 to T2. The initial momentum is zero. Uh, time goes from zero to T. 
the net external force. So uh, this equation is valid for the x direction as well as for the y direction, but we're not interested in y direction, right? We are interested only in x direction because we want to find capital F. So the net external force is going to be uh, 200 to the right, so let's assume that to be positive, and uh, F to the left, so this force is going to be 200 minus F dt equals the mass of B. The velocity of B is related to the angular speed of the rack. It's omega times uh, 0.15. So B equals omega r. So when you integrate this, since F is a constant to 200 minus F times T equals mb omega times 0.15. So F is unknown, T is unknown, MB is known, Omega is known, you know that. So this is our second equation. 1 and 2 are two equations in two unknowns, F and T. So you could technically solve for F here in terms of T and shove it in that equation. Or no, you can take F is this divided by T put it over here, uh, and then solve for t. So solving, we get t equals 0 0.6125 seconds. So this is another problem where it's a mixture of particle and rigid body. So we use angular impulse and momentum for the rigid body because that's the simplest one. Linear impulse and momentum because we had no choice. We had to use that. Uh, and then you solve for the unknowns. Uh, again, this problem can totally be solved using F equals MA, what you learned in chapter, um, two chapters before this, so 17, right? M equals I alpha and uh, uh, F equals MA, and you should get the same answer. The difference is going to be, uh, you will have to integrate alpha to solve for omega, which will be in terms of time. Exactly like what I described for the previous problem, but you should totally try this. So this is actually something which makes a life slightly easy because if we integrate f dt as opposed to i alpha, but the, the work is the same. So unlike principle of work energy, uh, this is not really something new. It just is a this is actually the integrated form of m equals i alpha that one, and this is actually an integrated form of f equals ma. So uh, so it's not really it doesn't really help too much. You could solve it with S equals MA. There's no real advantage of using this principle.